Every step of the lithographic process is important, and mixing ink is an exception to that. You'll have to mix your ink accordingly to any image. You know, every, every time I set up to, uh, to print, I'm going to modify my inks accordingly. And it uh, might be tricky because there's so much variety, but that just means uh, there's that much more versatility. Sometimes it's hard to get the tops off the inks. Just take a palette knife and, you know, work your way around it. You want to make sure that the ink is fresh. It doesn't have, it's not filled with custy uh, bits. It's just going to be a nightmare when you're printing. The way you mix your ink can dramatically affect how it's printed. And it uh, allows for a lot of versatility in the medium. I would say 80% of the inks that I mix are uh, based in a transparent base. Um, a lot of the time I, when I print, I uh, change the colors and mix them optically on, on the paper. So I'd, I'll be printing with transparent, uh, transparent inks and overlapping other, uh, other transparent inks to create a wide variety of colors. In this case, we're just printing a, a flat. You'll find that the trans base self loves itself a little bit more in the can as opposed to um, other types of ink like the red and the blue, the white, um, those types of ink you have to be a lot more careful about gouging in them just because uh, they'll dry out, the air will get inside and underneath and uh, it just pretty much destroys the cans of ink so just be uh, be aware of that. When you scoop out the ink you just want to take a little bit off the top. Um, the pigment load is very high in these uh, litho inks so you don't actually need all that much um, I guess depending on the value but here we're just using a, a tiny bit not even using the whole amount that I, I took out. Um, the pigment will go a long way into extending into it. And then we just want to make a nice middle value to blue. You can see how transparent it is when it's uh, rubbed against the glass surface. You can see how uh, you can still see what's going on underneath. You also want to have a flexible palette knife. Makes it a lot easier for mixing the inks. Just want to keep folding it on top of each other, mixing it around. It takes a couple minutes to mix ink. Some time I'll find if I'm printing a transparent ink, I'll mix it nine parts uh, trans base, one part, one part ink, or sometimes even less. You always want to make sure that you add the pigment to the trans base. You don't never want to add trans base to the ink, just because you'll be using such a huge amount of trans base to get, especially if you're trying to uh, trying to create a desired transparency. You're gonna use a huge amount of trans base, and you're gonna end up with a lot of waste. So we're using, we're mixing two types of ink. We're doing the white ink and the blue ink. Now it's very important that we make these inks have the same viscosity, otherwise they'll reject each other on the roller. We won't be able to get a nice pretty blend. The blue also has a tendency to want to spread out a lot more than white or the yellow colors, things like that. Red and blues are, I guess, nicknamed spreaders. So you want to use magnesium to shorten that ink and uh, just make it easier on yourself when printing so it's not going to spread it everywhere. Although we are printing we are printing a flat, we do want to fill in in the desired image but at the same time we don't want the, the pigment to, to separate from the ink. We want it, uh, we don't want ink to pick up in other areas on the stone so we want to shorten it, make it a little bit safer. So in order to shorten the ink we add magnesium to it. I like wearing a, a dust mask just because magnesium isn't very good to breathe in at all so um, you know Use it at your discretion. If it depends on how much ink you're mixing, I like using a mask. So you just take a little bit, a uh, little bit of uh, magnesium out. You want to use a clean palette knife, or sometimes uh, any, any. You just want to make sure you have a clean palette knife or a clean, uh, clean tool to take it out. You just add a tiny bit in at a time. Then I'm separating it off into the, into the blue and white ink. But you never want to dump the whole pile in at once. Just take a take a little bit over working in. You know, you can e easily spend an hour mixing a, a few colors especially if, uh, if they're modifying in different ways and they have to be the same viscosity. Keep folding it over and over and over. We don't want to have too short of an ink, but uh, we want it to be the same consistency as the blue. And the blue has a tendency to spread out more, so we want to, we want to balance that out so it's not, that it won't spread out. We want the white to be the same viscosity as the blue. And the more you do it, the more feel you have for the ink. Um, the more litho printing you do, the more understanding you'll have of how to modify your inks accordingly. See how short it is, you know, when you're running the palette knife down, if you see the sides are folding in or if they're staying erect, that's a, a good uh, notification. Good way to see uh, how short the ink is. If, if, if the sides of the wall are staying erect, then you know it's a, it's a shorter ink. It's not going to spread out on the pores of the stone, but if it, keeps, if it keeps running down and spreading out, you know over time it's going to fill in your image. But in this case, we do want to fill in a bit, so that's okay. Uh, another way to, to check to see uh, the shortness or length of your ink is just by dabbing with the palette knife. You can see where it breaks off, and uh, if it breaks off close to the palette knife, then it means it's a shorter ink. If it if it uh, withstands the whole length, 
which stands the whole length, then you know it's a longer, like if it doesn't break off, then you know it's a longer ink. And usually that's the generally how the inks come from the can. And most of the time you do want to modify them uh, according to what you're printing. A lot of time you'll be making a shorter ink if you're printing like a drawing or a wash, things like that. Uh, you'll have to modify it in a, um, quite a few ways. There's lots of different ways to do it. I like using tape to create a little window where I'm going to um, roll out the roll out the roller. Right before you print, um, you want to add a little bit of cesspool to your ink. I only like adding it right before you print. If you have it wrapped up in wax paper and stuff like that, it might loosen it and uh, it might actually leak out. So I like adding it just before I print. It's going to soften it. It's going to take down the tack and allow it to come off your roller in an easier fashion. So you don't have to work as hard pretty much. You just take a little blue on one side, a little bit of white on the other side. Not too, too much, but then you just uh, you work it in with the roller, feather it uh, gently back and forth. You can go inside the lines of the of the tape. It just, that gives me the window to work from. And also, if, when I'm printing my image, I'm not using the whole entire roller. Um, it's going to be more more in the middle. The areas in the middle are where I'm going to be uh, printing on a stone. So it just, it gives you a nice window to work with and uh, it's a good thing to do, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. I like doing it just to be safe. We're trying to, I'm trying to print an edition, so I want to try to keep it as consistent as I can. You can see I speed it up a little bit just to show how it smooths out. Moving it slightly back and forth to the right and left just to, to create the gradation to the blend. There it is. And that's, and that's what I'm printing on a stone. We're ready to start printing.